Hello, folks. This is another uh, Cyber Teacher production by Mr. B. And uh, just before I start on this one, I'd like to say a massive thanks to Mr. H and Mr. T for their help and, and work on this. So that's me, Mr. B. Well, strictly speaking, this is me, Mr. B. I'm a history teacher. And I was teaching my year nines the other day about the topic of World War One, and more specifically, this topic, the topic linked to what life was like in the in the trenches in the first world war and as we all know life in the trenches was pretty goddamn horrible so i asked them to do a, a bit of research in fact 30 minutes or so of research linked to what they could find out about conditions in the trenches and they did that and they found out all manner of things and went to all different types of sources when all of a sudden the student puts his hand up and goes excuse me sir check this geezer out I mean, soldier, he's sat in a trench with loads of stuff around him. He looks a bit like one of these, a troll. And this is the picture he showed us. Well, being really intrigued, we want to find out a little bit more. So that's exactly what they did. They did a little bit of more research linked to finding out about this extraordinary character and the story behind him. And this is what they found out. It turns out that this was an Australian soldier. He's a member of the famous Anzacs, the Australian New Zealand Army Corps, or the Australian Imperial Forces, uh, which were made up of Aussie and uh, New Zealand uh, soldiers who went out and fought with such ferocity in the First World War. And to cut a long story short, this guy's name was John Barney Hines. And what we went on to discover about him was both remarkable and in many ways tragic. So, born in Liverpool, um, John Barney Hines uh, was uh, uh, the son of German immigrant parents. And when he got into his early 20s, he decided he was going to make uh, things uh, better for himself and his life. And he emigrated 18,000 kilometres to this place, yes, New Zealand. And uh, it wasn't all good for him, though, because he was a little bit of a scallywag and he ended up getting in so much trouble with the New Zealand police that eventually he decided that he was going to emigrate to australia and he did that in 1915 went all the way across from new zealand to australia to try and make a new life for himself what happens next well he joins the australian imperial force in 1915 at the ripe old age of 36 which you've got to remember is ancient at this time considering that the average age of the person joining in the in the first world war was around 22 or 23 years of age Well, it turns out Barney was a little bit of a rogue, really, with uh, his commanding officers. And he did some bad things in the trenches. In particular, he liked his old grog or his booze and he drank quite a lot. And this really got the wind up most of his commanders. However, it turns out he was also incredibly brave. And his commanding officer called him a tower of strength for the battalion when he was in the front line. Well, here are a few things that he did. The first thing is, apparently, in terms of, out of all soldiers of the IAF and the Anzacs, he killed more German soldiers than any other soldier in the First World War. What else did he do? Well, during the Battle of Messines, get a load of this. In 1917, he charged a German pillbox. He had a load of um, hand grenades with him. He dropped them through the slit in the pillbox. And as a consequence of that, he captured over 60 Germany prisoners. And eyewitness accounts also say apparently he was dancing up and down on this pillbox. That's the kind of character he was, but incredibly brave. He also got injured quite a few times. Ouch. In fact, he was so brave, many of his fellow soldiers thought he should have been awarded some seriously important medals, like these ones, and in particular, this one, the VC. But as you know, Barney had a bad reputation for upsetting his superiors and being a bit of a naughty boy. Sometimes he would go AWOL, absent without leave, from the frontline trenches. And his nickname, they called him, was Wild Eyes. Do you know what? He was even demoted from being a sergeant for these actions. And legend has it, he apparently even robbed a bank in Amiens and forged entries in his paybooks. So he was a bit of a scallywag. 
He also, of course, and this is perhaps what he's most famous for, is he amassed a huge collection of items, souvenirs and memorabilia that, how shall we say, he, inverted commas, acquired from enemy soldiers. And this earned him his other nickname, the Souvenir King. See, the subsequent pro pho photograph, this one I'm showing you now, of him sitting in a trench surrounded by his treasures, became one of the best known Australian photographs of the war and was titled Wild Eyes. So when the war is over, it doesn't all go well for Barney, though. He goes back to Oz and he suffers like many thousands of soldiers in the First World War and in subsequent war of this PTSD, which is otherwise known as post-traumatic stress disorder. You see, he found it really difficult to get over his wartime experiences. And at that time, there wasn't much help in terms of soldiers getting treatment for this. So after trying various different manual jobs, what did he do? Well, he sets up home in a humpy. Never heard of what a humpy is? Well, a humpy is like a temporary shelter. It's an Aboriginal term. And uh, he basically lives on the outskirts of Sydney for the next 40 years in a place called Mount Druid. Literally just sets up shop in this humpy. And times, believe it or not, were very, very tough. He carries on drinking. So how does he make money? Well, one thing he does is he sells some of his souvenirs that he's acquired over his time in the First World War. And he even put some of these on a fence around his humpy, particularly the German helmets. But as I said, he keeps on drinking. He loves his grog, probably trying to get over his PTSD. And word gets out from some of his veterans as to how tough times are for this, this former hero of, the world, of World War One, And so they put their hands in their pockets and they get him a load of money to help him in terms of his um, getting over his poverty. But you know what? Despite being poor and living in a humpy, he grew his own vegetables. And he incredibly kindly gave a basket of these vegetables every week to the local veterans hospital to help all those um, veterans who were still suffering from their injuries from the First World War. Believe it or not as well, and this is incredible, in 1940, at the ripe old age of 62, he even tried to join the Australian army to fight in the Second World War. But unsurprisingly, they turned him down. Well, poor old Barney never married and eventually he died in a local veterans hospital in 1958 where he was initially buried and really sadly in an unmarked grave until 1971 when this memorial stone was erected for him uh, uh, in um, Mount Druitt and uh, they also kindly named a street after him so he became even more of a hero really once he had passed away so that's it, folks. That's the true and tragic story of this amazing character, John Barney Hines. And today he still sees picture at the Australian War Memorial in Canberra. It's a lasting tribute to a hero whose skills, let's be honest, in war had little place in a peaceful society. Hope you've really enjoyed it. Don't forget to check out our other videos. There's loads of other stuff coming up on Cyber Teachers. So keep an eye out for it. And as always, if you've liked any of this, even a little bit of it, don't forget to subscribe. Take care of yourselves.